Hello viewers, welcome back to class. Hello viewers, welcome back to class. You are welcome, 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 welcome to Master Builders Online Academy. I'm super, super excited because of the way this lesson is going. Now, currently, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done so. And we're sure that you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos when we upload it. And guys, don't forget our policy that you should not skip any part of this video. For this is for your own advantage. And also, ensure that you avoid every unnecessary distractions anytime you are set to learn from this platform. And finally, if there be any part in this video that you do not understand when you watch it for the very first time, please replay the video over and over and over again until you gain mastery or maximum understanding about that particular point where you are having issues. And that's the reason why this lesson is coming in video format. And if after you have watched over and over and over again, you still have questions to ask, then slide to the comment section and make your necessary comments. You can ask questions at the comment section. You can appreciate the values and the words you obtain from this lesson at the comment section. And you can equally make your necessary observation to how we can improve our services online for better impacts. All right, now don't forget that we have been looking at differentiation of functions in calculus. And currently, we are going to be looking at quotient functions. Of course, by now you don't have issues with what functions are all about. Now, we are looking at quotient functions and where you can actually use quotient rule for quotient functions. Every quotient function are solved with quotient rule. Now, the question is, how do I identify quotient functions? Now, quotient functions are functions that comes in fractional form, where you have a numerator and a denominator. And in Y, the numerator is a function of X, and equally, the denominator is a function of X. Now, both the numerator and the denominator can be of the same type of function. They can be different type of function. For instance, you can have linear function at the numerator and equally have linear function at the denominator. You can have exponential function at the numerator and have a linear function at the denominator. Just understand that this is a combination of two functions where one function is being divided by another. So anytime you are asked to differentiate a function where one function is being divided by another, the method that is suitable for such problem is called the quotient rules. Now, on the board, we are asked, we have if y is equal to u over v, comma, where u and v are functions of x. Both the numerator and the denominator are functions of x. If the numerator is a function of x and the denominator is not a function of x, it is not the quotient rule. And equally, if the numerator is a constant or it's not a function of x and the denominator only is a function of x, that is not the quotient rule. A quotient rule comes in or a quotient function comes in when the numerator is a function of x and equally the denominator is a function of x. So we have that u and v are both functions of x. Now in this case, there is a mathematical formula to obtain the derivative of such functions. Now, what's the formula? We have d1 over dx is equal to v d u over dx, which is the denominator, minus u d v over dx, all over v squared, which is stated as y prime in a short way is equal to u multiplied by the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator multiplied by the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator square. So, if we want to explain this formula in details, all you just need to understand, because we are solving these problems using shortcuts, we are not necessarily using the formula, but we will put the formula in hand to be able to approach quotient functions. Are we there? So you need to know this formula to be able to apply the shortcuts. So how does the shortcut work? Now listen carefully. 
All you need to do is to know that we have that y is equal to u over v. This is first function, this is second function, or this is numerator, and this is denominator. Are you there? Just follow me, because if you understand what I'm going to explain now, then you can solve any problems on quotient functions with the shortcut method. Now listen, all you need to do to find the derivative of this function is put down the denominator, and what's the denominator? V. Multiply by the derivative of the numerator, which means you need to differentiate the numerator. And to differentiate the numerator, you simply have u prime. Which is the same thing now. Listen carefully, u prime is the same thing as the u over the s. You are differentiating u with respect to x because we already explained that u is a function of x. So if I differentiate you, I need to differentiate you with respect to x. Now that's it. So u prime is equivalent to the u over the s. Then negative minus pull down the numerator now, which is u. Now, multiply by the derivative of the denominator. In other words, you need to differentiate the denominator and use it to multiply the numerator. Then you are giving us what? V prime. And understand equally that V prime is the same thing as the V over the X. Why? Because we explained earlier that V is a function of X. Then, all over the denominator squared. So, this is the shortcut. Put down the denominator. Multiply by the derivative of the denominator minus put down the numerator, multiply by the derivative of the denominator all over the square of the denominator. So, if this is understood now, guys, let's start looking at the basic problems that we have before us. Like I explained before, don't forget that when you know principles, you become a principal. And equally, when you understand boundary conditions, you will not overstep your boundary. So, if at this point you have not been able to get the concept, please replay the video before you start solving the problems. Are you there? Replay the video so that you understand the concept. Then, when you take a problem to solve, it will be easy for you to handle. Basic principles are what gives you basic foundation to become outstanding or gain mastery over a particular aspect of any course or the full course. In general. Now, on the board, we have the very problem on the board. We are asked to differentiate the following functions with respect to x. So when you see w dot r dot t, it means with respect to x. So we are differentiating all of these functions with respect to x. Now, when we look at all of these functions, these two functions that we have, all of these functions that we have here. They are all functions of x and y. I mean that we have only two variables here where x is the one independent variable, y is the dependent variable. So these are the two functions that we have here. We put down solution. We have a. Now we are asked to differentiate y is equal to 6 plus 7x all over 4 minus don't forget that this is equivalent to u over v we are going to use a formula we are going to use shortcuts for having the formula at the back of our mind now this is it the function at the numerator is u the one at the denominator is v and when we look at these two functions now we discover that the numerator is a linear function where the highest power of x is one and the denominator is equally a linear function. So we said earlier that quotient rule function, quotient function comes in such a way that you will divide one function by another function of which these functions are functions of x and they can be equal functions or functions of the same type or of different kinds. So we look at this now, these functions are functions of the same kind. Linear functions divided by another linear function. Okay, now all we need to do using short code is to put down the y over the x is equal to what you do. Pull down the denominator, identify the denominator here, which is 4 minus x. Alright? Multiply by the derivative of the numerator. So all you need to do, this is the numerator, which is this. So when I differentiate 6, I have 0. And when I differentiate 7x, I have 7. 
And when I add 7 to 0, I have 7. So I will multiply this by 7. Put it at the back. Then minus, understand that you need to separate the two functions with minus. Then pull down the numerator, which is 6 plus 7x. Now multiply by the derivative of the denominator. So pull down the denominator, which is what 4 minus x. Now when I differentiate 4, I have 0. And when I differentiate minus x, I have minus 1. And automatically this is minus 1. So I will multiply this function by minus 1 all over denominator squared. So put down the denominator and square it. This is it. So if this is understood, then we are done. Everything that we do here is basic, basic expansion that we have been doing before now. Okay? All we need to do is to clear up the bracket by multiplying the terms inside the bracket by their multiplication factor. So when I multiply 4 by 7, we will have this to be what? 28. And when I multiply minus x by 7, we have minus 7x. Now, guys, listen carefully. This is negative sign. Minus multiplied by minus is plus, and everything here will be plus. Now, understand that when you multiply 1 by anything, it will remain. So that shows that 6 multiplied by 1 is 6, and 7x multiplied by 1 is 7x, all over the denominator squared. Now, finally, what we now want to add up the, the like terms. Now, 28 and 6 belong to the same family of constants. So that means I can add 6 to 28. And when we add 6 to 28, we will have this to be what? 34. Now, 7 minus 7x plus 7x, we cancel out. That. So all I have left is the denominator. This is the answer to this very question. You see how simple it is? It's as simple as this. Now, for question number B, we have that y is equal to x plus 8 all over x plus 9. And this is equivalent to u over v. Very simple. Using shortcut, this is the denominator, this is the numerator. So, first, all we do is to put that the y over the x is equal to pull down the numerator, denominator. The first thing you do is to pull down the denominator, and the denominator here is x plus 9. Multiply by the derivative of the numerator, and here we have the numerator as x plus 8. When we differentiate x, we have 1, and when we differentiate 8, we have 0, and 1 plus 0, we have 1. So we are going to multiply these brackets by 1. Then minus. Now pull down the numerator, which is x plus 8. Now differentiate the denominator, and the denominator is x plus 9. So when I differentiate x, I have 1. When I differentiate 9, being a constant, I have 0. And when I add 1 to 0, I have 1. So I'm multiplying this by 1. And understand by mathematically, any function multiplied by 1, or any term multiplied by 1, the term remains the same. 1 does not reduce or increase any term or any value. Okay, then we put down the denominator and square it. It's as simple as this. All we need to do now at the numerator is to clear all the fraction. You really do not have much work to do at the denominator. Your major interest here is to simplify the numerator to its least form. And now we will have this as everything here multiplied by 1. We will still have this x plus 9 minus negative 1 multiplied by x, we have negative x, and negative 1 multiplied by plus 8, we have negative 8. All over x plus 9 all squared. Finally, the answer to this, guys, now we can add all the like terms. x, this is positive x, and this is negative x. They will definitely cancel out. Now, 9 minus 8 plus 9 minus 8, this will have given us 1. All over the denominator. This is the answer to this second question. Now listen carefully, like I've ever, always explained, I've always tell you guys, anytime you understand principles, you become a principal. And when you understand boundary conditions, 
You know we not overstep your boundary. What am I trying to say here? I want to give you something that will always put you on check that you are right or wrong. Anytime you are dealing with quotient functions, listen carefully, and the numerator is a linear function, equally the denominator is a linear function, when you simplify or differentiate the function, at the end of your solution, you will always have constant as the value at the numerator. Listen to this. Anytime you are dealing with the quotient function and the numerator, both the numerator and the denominator are all linear functions like we have here and like we also have here. Understand that your final answer at the numerator, you must not have a term containing x. Any term in x is always out of your solution. Okay? So put it at the back of your mind that when you solve this problem, the numerator we never carry x. It will always be constant. The numerator will always be constant. Now you can verify this with numbers or problem, but this is only valid when both the numerator and the denominator are both linear functions. If this is understood, now let's look at question number three. Now guys, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, do consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and ensure that you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos. You will be up, up, updated when we upload new content, even while you are asleep, at work, in class, or even in your reading table. You get information from master builders and you can quickly pick up your phone and learn new concepts. Question number C. Now we have that one is equal to sign x all over 3x plus 2. And don't forget that this is also equivalent to u over v, where the numerator is a trig function and the denominator is a linear function. It can be any function. Your interest is to be able to identify the function because when you differentiate trig function, the outcome is different from when you differentiate a linear function. So this is the only need for you to identify the functions that are given. Once you are able to identify the function that you are given, it enables you to know that if I differentiate this function, this is what I get in return. And if I differentiate this other one, this is what I get in return. This is how it is. Then the next is to be able to identify the function you have at the denominator and the one you have at the numerator. And of course, you now know that in applying the shortcut, you pull down the denominator, multiply by the derivative of the numerator, then pull down the numerator, multiply by the derivative of the numerator, all over the denominator. So if this is understood, then we have dy over dx is equal to, now what's the denominator here? 3x plus 2. Multiply by what is the numerator? The numerator is sine x. And we need to differentiate the numerator so that we can multiply this result by the differential result of this. And when we differentiate sine, guys, we have cos x. So this will be minus cos x. Then minus sine x. Put down the numerator. Then multiply by what the, the derivative of the denominator. So what is the denominator? We have 3x plus 2. So when I differentiate 3x, I have 3. When I differentiate 2 being a constant, I have 0. And when I add 0 to 3, I have 3. That means to say, I will multiply the numerator by 3 all over. What do we have at the denominator? 3x plus 2 all squared. It's as simple as this. All we just need to do now is to simplify this. Clear off the brackets. And how do we clear off the brackets? We know that these two terms inside the first bracket will be multiplied by cos x. So when I multiply the first term by cos x, this will have given us 3x cos x. And when I multiply this other guy by cos x, that would have also given us plus 2 cos x. And when I multiply this by 3, I have 3 sin x all over x, 3x plus 2 all squared. Now you can leave your answer like this. Equally, you, might decide, you can also decide to leave your answer here. Why? Because you are dealing with objective. And when you are dealing with objective, once you have your question, you have your option. So, where you will stop is determined by the options that you have. 
Are you there? So if you see that the option that you have there, you only have costs appearing once, that means they never expanded this bracket. So you will leave this bracket unexpanded. Are you there? That is how it is. So working on objective, you always watch your options and stop. Are you there? That watch your options, then stop. Ensure that your solution actually matches one of the options accurately without manipulating values. Get it right? Without manipulating values. Now, if this is understood, like I said, you can decide to bring this back, factorize, and have this. Why we just multiply only this and this? Okay. Now we have D. And we have that Y is equal to exponent 2X over sine X. Don't forget that this is equivalent to what? UV. Numerator is U and the denominator is V. Now, we said that quotient functions are functions that a, a particular function is divided by another function. Now, at the numerator, we have an exponential function. We have identified that. And at the denominator, we have a trig function. So, what do I do? I will put down the denominator, multiply by the derivative of the numerator, minus put down the numerator, multiply by the derivative of the denominator. Are you there? Now, if that is taken, then we have the y over the x is equal to the denominator here is sine x. Then multiply by the derivative of the numerator. Now, understand that the numerator is 2x, exponential 2x. All you need to do anytime you are differentiating exponential functions, where the coefficient of the exponential function or x is more than 1, all you just need to do is to differentiate the power of the exponent. When you differentiate 2x, what do you have, guys? You have 2. Pull down 2, then repeat the whole exponential function that you are given. That's all. So when you differentiate exponent 2x, you have 2 exponent 2x. When you differentiate exponent 3x, you have 3 exponential 3x. When you differentiate exponential minus 10x, you are only going to have minus 10 exponential minus 10x. Only the coefficient constant to become the coefficient of the whole exponential function. That's exactly what we have. So we have this to be what 2 exponent 2x then minus we will now put down the numerator then multiply by what? The derivative of the denominator and understand that the denominator is sine x and when you differentiate sine x you have cos x now, don't forget that this question can equally come in another form where you have this to be cos x. So, you, all you just need here is not solving thousands of problems or having somebody to solve thousands of problems for you. All you need is having somebody to tell you the principles that work. Even when the person solves one problem with the principles and the concepts you get, you will be able to solve thousands, in fact, millions of problems on your own, living by those rules. Are you there? Now, if this is understood, then we have all over the denominator. And what is the denominator? Sine x. And we square x also. So all I need to do now is to multiply this guy by this. I, I will have this as 2 exponent 2x sine x minus exponent 2x cos x all over sine square x. When you have a multiplied by a, you have a squared. So the same thing we have here, this will have given us sine square x. Now for this, we can decide to factorize it because we have exponential function here in the first term. And in the second term, we also have exponential function there. So we just bring out the exponential function and leave the other functions. So exponential 2x is constant. So if we divide this first term by exponential 2x, Exponential 2x cancels exponential 2x. Then we'll be left with 2 sine x. Then minus, when we divide exponential 2x cos x by exponential 2x, exponential 2x cancels exponential 2x. Then we are left with cos x. All over sine square x. This is the answer to this very question. You see that these things are very, very easy and very, very simple. All you just need to do is to understand the basis. So we have question number 
y is equivalent to 5x squared minus plus 9x plus 6 is equal to 1 plus x. Not forget that this is equivalent to u over v. This will be your first definition. Are we there? Now, we are still making use of shortcuts. So, all I need to do now is to identify the function at the numerator and equally identify the function at the denominator. Now, at the numerator, the function there is quadratic function, where the power of x is 2. And at the denominator, we have a linear function. That is to say, these two functions are the same, but they belong to the same family of polynomial functions. Are we there? So all I need to do now is to put down the denominator and differentiate the numerator. So I have dy over dx is equal to 1 plus x. This is the denominator. Now I will differentiate the numerator. Now don't forget that numerator is 5x squared plus 9x plus 6. So let's differentiate this individually. When we differentiate 5x squared, this will give us 10x. When we differentiate 9x, we have 9. When we differentiate 6 being a constant, we have 0. So automatically, this will have given us 10x plus 9. So we have 10x plus 9. Then minus, the next thing we are going to do is to pull down the numerator and differentiate the denominator. So the numerator here is 5x squared plus 9x plus 6. Multiply by now the denominator is 1 plus x. So when I differentiate 1, I have 0. When I differentiate x, I have 1. Now 0 plus 1 is 1. That means when we differentiate 1 plus x, our result is 1. Then we multiply the numerator by 1. All over. Then the next thing we are going to do is what we have at the denominator. The denominator is 1 plus x. All squared. Similarly, the rest is to work on the numerator by clearing off the brackets. Now, to clear off the brackets, you see that this function we have here is expansion of brackets. Now, if you are not good with expansion, you can check our playlist and go to a session where we have simplification of algebraic expression, and then you will look for videos made or lessons of expansion of brackets. But very quickly, I will use this to explain this. Now listen carefully. To expand 1 plus x into 10x plus 9, all I need to do is to use the first term in the first bracket to multiply the first term in the second bracket and equally use it to multiply the second term in the second bracket. So I'm going to have 1 multiplied by 10x this will have given us 10x. 1 multiplied by 9, we have 9. We are done using the first term here to multiply the two terms in the second bracket. Then we will come to the second term in the first bracket. We use this to multiply the first term and equally use it to multiply the second term. So x multiplied by 10x, this will have given us 10x squared. And x multiplied by 9, we will have this as well, 9x. Now, when we simplify this here, this will have given us 10x squared, in order of that to be 9x plus 10x, would have given us plus 19x, then 9 as our constant. So, in place of this bracket now, we are going to do this. Hope you understand how we obtain this. It's very simple. Use the first term in the first bracket to multiply the two terms in the second bracket. Put down the result, then move that to first bracket and take the second term in the first bracket to equally multiply the two terms in the second bracket. When that is done, then you can add up the terms that you can add up together. And also, then arrange it in the order of degree, either in descending order or ascending order as you are needed. But understand that this is subjective and you must arrange your work based on the options that you have. Are you there? It's as simple as that. So, very quickly, we will replace this whole bracket with this last guy. Alright? Then this will have given us 10x squared plus 19x plus 9 multiplied by now. Understand that we are multiplying this first bracket by 1. 
And whenever I multiply any function or any value, it remains the same. So we have negative multiplied by 5x, we have negative f squared. Negative 1 multiplied by this, we have negative 9x. And negative this multiplied by this, we have negative 6. All over the square of the denominator. This is it. If this is understood, then the next thing we are quickly going to do is to what? add up the ones we can add up, then subtract the one we can subtract. And we are done. So this is 10 s squared and this is 5 s squared. Now plus 10 s squared minus 5 s squared, we will be left with what? 5 s squared. And now 19x minus 9x, we will have this as plus 10x. And 9 minus 6, we will have negative plus what? 3. All over 1 plus x or squared. So we cannot simplify this further. We will leave our answer here. This is the answer to this very question. Now, when you look at this question now, it's not really different from the question. In fact, the answer to this question looks more complex than the question itself. But don't forget, when you work with principles, you will not be scared whether you have the actual answer or not. Anytime you follow principles without manipulating values, you are sure that you will arrive at the promised land. So guys, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done so. And ensure that you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos. Don't forget to share this video, like this video, and make your necessary comments. As usual, you will always check the description below where you will find the link to the next lesson. See you guys in the next class. Thanks for watching.